So uh, what do you think causes climate change? This is the interactive portion, so feel free to <laughs> just yell it out. CO2, CO2 somebody said. Uh, some would say Democrats. <laughs> um, it's not Al Gore's fault, uh, you know. Not everybody loves Al, but, uh, but you know, it's not his fault that we're heating up the planet. He was really just the messenger or one of them. Um, but what, what really causes climate change, you guys got it, it's CO2. Um, if we look back over the last 100,000 years of the planet's history, uh, we see these rises and falls in CO2. And these actually track the rises and falls in the temperature of uh, the, 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 uh, the planet. And these cycles of sort of 10,000 years of warming and 100,000 years of cooling uh, go back for millions of years. And what had happened was, you know, we talked about 20,000 years ago, that was the end of this last cold period. And then we warmed up out of this cold period into the Holocene, that 10,000 years of sweet climate. Uh, and now what we're doing is we're looking at putting carbon dioxide up to levels that haven't been seen for uh, hundreds of thousands, or probably millions of years. So we're changing our composition, we're changing the composition of our atmosphere in a way. Uh, we've now pushed past the 400 parts per million mark, which is about right here. Uh, and we've done it in the last hundred years. So this is a major change in the composition of our atmosphere. Now often people ask me, how do you know that? And we have all kinds of techniques. I like to talk a little bit about how we know the information we know, because I think it's important. Um, you know, if you drill down through the ice cores, uh, if you drill down through glaciers, um, there are glaciers in the world still, for the moment, uh, where the snow doesn't melt completely every year, and it stacks on top of each other. And you can see these annual layers. And if you drill down through, the, through these annual layers, you can find tiny little bubbles where the air has been captured. And you can measure the old atmosphere uh, all the way back hundreds of thousands of years. And that's how we build these records of carbon dioxide. And you can actually measure temperature separately. So you can measure both carbon dioxide and temperature based on the isotopes that get uh, taken up um, and the amount of actual CO2 trapped in the little bubbles. So uh, we have a pretty good record. You know, often people say, well, there was nobody around a million years ago. How do you know CO2 was what it was? Uh, well, this is how we know. We, we dig it up. Now, every global warming talk has a slide like this. And this is mine. Uh, this is a, 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 just a simple schematic of what causes global warming. So all of the important energy that we get for uh, our planet's climate comes from the sun. And this energy essentially goes right through the atmosphere. Uh, you can see the sunlight when you walk outside, and even though it's gone all the way through the atmosphere. And the reason is because the sunlight is basically, uh, the atmosphere is transparent when it comes to sunlight. Sunlight goes right through. Now some bounces off clouds and other things, yes. But by and large, most of the energy goes right through the atmosphere, and it gets absorbed at the surface. And remember, two-thirds of the ocean, two-thirds of the surface is, I gave it away, ocean, right? <laughs> so by and large, this energy is heating up the oceans. And that warm uh, ocean radiates energy back out towards space. So we've got the energy coming in, gets sucked up by the ocean, and it gets spit back out toward the atmosphere. Now the problem is that the energy going out is different. It's long wave radiation, what we call uh, 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 infrared radiation. And the atmosphere actually absorbs that. And the amount that it absorbs it depends on how much carbon dioxide there is. So very simply, if we change the composition of the atmosphere, we're trapping extra heat on the planet, right? So the question is, where does the heat go? Well, Mark ruined the answer already uh, by telling you in the beginning, but anybody want to guess? The oceans, yes. I heard somebody say it. That counts. You get extra credit. Uh, yeah, over 90% of the heat trapped by global warming is going into the oceans. So if you're not really looking in the oceans, you're not really seeing the signal. So even though we think of global warming as global temperature increase, really it's here. It's global heating. It's that extra heat that's trapped in the ocean that's really important, that's really changing our climate. So almost all of the action in terms of global warming is really in the oceans. You know, if we imagine our sun again and our atmosphere, before climate change started, so say during that 10,000 year period of climate happiness, um, well, essentially we were getting the same amount of energy coming in from the sun as was going back out into space. And what happened in the last 150 years is we reshaped the atmosphere. We changed the composition of the atmosphere and we started keeping more of this heat on the planet. So if you look at our, our little happy earth, what's happening is he's getting warmer, right? He's turning into hot earth. Now uh, eventually um, this heat goes somewhere, it warms up the oceans, it warms up the atmosphere. Eventually um, you get a warm enough atmosphere it starts sending more radiation back out into space. So you achieve a new balance, a new uh, Earth, a new climate. But the penalty for that new balance is that now you've got a warmer Earth. You've heated up your planet. But remember, I said that global warming is all happening in the oceans. So in order to get from the left Earth that's normal and cool to the right Earth that's hot and sweaty, you have to first heat up the oceans. And heating up the oceans is a huge task because they're so big. 
In fact, it takes something like a thousand years for the heat we put in the ocean today to spread through the entire oceans uh, and eventually circulate back up uh, to the surface. So we're setting in motion changes by changing this composition of the atmosphere that are going to be with us for something like a thousand years. So if you go back to my title about irreversibility, no way back, um, you know, in terms of a human scale, in terms of people alive today, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we're really looking at changes that we're not going to be able to undo in any easy way uh, for thousands of years. Sea level rise will continue to happen even after we stop putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because it takes the oceans so long to absorb and eventually redistribute this heat. So, is global warming really happening? Um, I say yes. Um, my friends say yes.